called Jump Up. The famous song on this one is Blue Eyes. Uh, it's the last song on side one. It's sort of like, you know, very different to all the other songs on the album. It's like very sort of, um, I don't know, it's a bit sad. I guess. But yeah, the, the cover work is amazing. He actually had a public wedding uh, not far from where I was living in Melbourne, Australia. He actually got married in a supermarket of all places. And we found out later that, you know, that wedding was actually a fake wedding. Uh, I think he married his makeup artist or something. It was like just to help him like look normal, look straight. Yeah, but Earth Shaker, the Japanese heavy metal band, they were formed 78 in Osaka. One of the first Japanese heavy metal bands. Um, they steered towards a poppier sound on later albums. And that's when they sort of dropped out of their worldwide view. But um, they've always been popular in Japan. Um, even today, the original members of the band are still together, which is very rare. Um, I mentioned Loudness before. Um, Minoru Nihara from Loudness was actually a bass and vocalist in this band um, early on. Yeah, this album is called Passion. So P Passion came out in 1985. This is probably, you know, when they were at their peak, I guess. Album came out in 1981. But yeah, they're very unusual kind of guys. You know, elements of Gary Newman, um, Duran Duran. The first classic Nouveau album, Night People, was released and it had successful singles on there, Guilty and Tokyo. Then their second album that they bought out uh, had that song, Is It A Dream? which is sort of, you know, a very famous kind of song. It's on all the 80s, various artists' um, albums. And then they only made one more album after that. The third album was released in 83. Balaam and the Angel. Um, the greatest story ever told. So it's sort of, like, straight away, it reminds me a little bit of the country, U2, the guys, brothers. Pretty amazing. They look a little bit like the cult, you know? Um, yeah, it's Japanese one side, English the other side. Yeah, you can sort of see that they're brothers there. Actually, they played some tour dates opening for the cult. Then they caught the attention of Virgin Records, and they got signed, and then they released this album. This is the famous song, Heat of the Moment. They began in 1981, so you know, this album was 82. Um, with the apparent demise of Yes and Emerson, Lake and Palmer um, and King Crimson, says John Wenton, they um, got together and formed this band. So 1981 to 85 was Heat of the Moment. Uh, this song is a really big hit. Um, and yeah, then 85 to 91, they broke up and they reformed a different lineup. But yeah, they're still together today, it's amazing. It sort of um, makes you wonder if they'll ever break up because, you know, new members just keep joining and the new members are young. The album is called Astra. And the song came out in 1985. So the third Asia album was gonna be called Arcadia. But then they realized um, it was similar to something Duran Duran were doing. So they retitled it Astra. Um, it wasn't as commercially successful as their previous two albums. Um, they were going to have a tour, but it was cancelled because it wasn't selling. Um, had a song on there called Go, which did pretty good. Um, yeah, this was their last full-length studio album with John Wetton as vocalist until, you know, 2008 where he came back. Glam metal, heavy metal. Um, pretty much they were perfecting, you know, what Ozzy Osbourne started in the early 80s. So it's good music. Back cover. Everybody's got big hair. American flag, spandex. 
no tattoos, you know. These days everybody has tattoos, no pictures, black and white. I think um, there was some story about him. Yeah, he became a woman later. So he was Mark Free in the 80s and then in the 90s he became Marcy. Marcy Michelle Free. So, you know, this guy, I think, this girl or guy. So he must have had some issues there. Yeah. Um, Book of Dreams. This is his tenth album. It's amazing. Um, it came out '77, and three singles were released from it. But Jet Airliner was the big one. Perception was all music gave the album a, a rating of four out of five stars. It's a highlight of '70s classic rock era. Sort of timeless music, really. The uh, All Shook Up is the fifth studio album by American rock band Cheap Trick, released in 1980. So, you know, you can consider 1980, you know, British Steel, Judas Priest, Back in Black, um, ACDC, Ozzy Osbourne's album, you know, really heavy. But this is very sort of um, unusual kind of music. It was produced by former Beatles producer George Martin. So it definitely has a, a Beatles feeling about it. Um, the genre is labelled as hard rock power pop, so I'd, I would probably say power pop. Um, the Wikipedia page says this album is even quirkier than its predecessor, Dream Police. Uh, many of the songs were less radio friendly and more experimental, so I like that. Um, and the cover art influenced by Margaret's time transfixed, so it's like a classic picture led many to question what the band was trying to accomplish. A lot of people were confused by the album art. Cheap Trick had severed ties with longtime producer Tom Worman, so they took the opportunity to take their sound in a different direction. So you gotta respect that. Um, yeah, it's very sort of like 60s, 60s rock pop. This one was released 1979. True Boy Army was basically Gary Newman's band and it was the second album they'd released. Um, after this I think Gary Newman went solo. A loose concept album based on a book that he was writing, um, SF, about androids with cloned human skin um, and other machines. While the album setting and lyrics were directly inspired by um, Do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep, so basically, you know, like he was inspired by um, Philip K. Dick, the science fiction writer, and also the movie Blade Runner, but it wasn't like a direct connection. He sort of had his own ideas. Canadian hard rock musician Aldo Nova. Um, it went pretty high. It went to number eight, and he became sort of one of those guys that helps a lot of other artists. Pretty good song, this. He's got that song called Monkey On My Back. That's probably one of my all-time favorite heavy metal songs on another album. But um, yeah, he started in the 80s. Um, he released this one, 1982, with two singles on it, Fantasy and Fooling Yourself. Then his second album, Subject Aldo Nova, was, on 1983, had two singles also, Monkey On Your Back, which was big. I you know, heard that one in Australia. And another one called Always Be Mine. And then the third album called Twitch in 1985 was a very unusual album. It's a like concept album. Um, but yeah, apparently, like looking at his Wikipedia page, um, his record company kept insisting that he make more commercial album. He wanted to go heavy, I guess, and rocking, but he wasn't satisfied with his record company always pushing him to be poppy. So, you know, he had problems there. Um, he worked on jingles, like um, radio and TV music, and um, you know, in the late 80s. But um, yeah, he had some trouble, and then in 1990, he wrote the main guitar riff that would be Blaze of Glory for John Bon Jovi's album. That was an amazing song. The second studio album by synth pop duo Black Menage. It was their most successful album. Had an uh, ABBA cover on there, The Day Before You Came. They formed in 1979. They were a duo for most of their career. Yeah, Living on the Ceiling was um, one of their really big songs that I remember. It's not on this album. 
the duo broke up in 1986 and then they got back together 2011. Yeah, that's that one. Catch you later.